It's only two days till Christmas, but the troops here won't be rushing out to do their last minute Christmas shopping. They'll definitely be missing their loved ones, but they won't be missing a home style Christmas dinner. Hi, Mom! <laughs> the U.S. military will be feeding 300,000 troops 559,000 pounds of turkey and other meats, 224,000 pounds of fruitcake and pies, 210,000 pounds of bread and rolls, all washed down with thousands of gallons of sparkling cider and eggnog. If you're wondering how our troops will fight the Battle of the Bulge this holiday season, activities include softball, a six-kilometer run, and ping pong. Welcome to the special Christmas edition of Log Bay Stelta's Bug Olympic Qualifiers. <laughs> yes, folks, you heard it right. A bug race. This is Cynthia Clancy for ANN, Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. Okay, Clancy. This is our fourth month anniversary bug race. I know what you've all been thinking. Has it really been that long? Tea with lemon. <laughs> hey, can we get started here? Don't be in such a hurry, Rick. You know you're going to lose. Yeah. Come on, dune buggy. Burn rubber. <laughs> I swear, you two act worse than my kid. Sergeant Stevens has graciously condescended to be our impartial judge. We all appreciate your cooperation, Sergeant. I hate these races. <laughs> OK, here we go. One, two, three. And they're out! Oh, no! oh, oh, a vacation at the Roach Motel in your future. <laughs> I guess Saddam's mistake was trying to get the best of Storm and Norman. Pay up, Abari. I want those peaches. <laughs> the owner of our magnificent champion desert beetle, Storm and Norman, Carl Dupree, wins a stolen citronella insect repellent mm. candle. And a half dozen mashed potato pancake angels made by yours truly. Uh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I share the honor and respect with my stallion, Storm and Norman, without whom I am truly nothing. Until next time. Cynthia Clancy, ANN. Fred Evans. Captain Frawley. I take it Sergeant Stevens has given you the rap. No booze, no porno. No short shorts, no low-cut dresses. And it appears no news. Is that a problem? No. No, we're here to do a human interest story. Show the folks back home how the troops are celebrating the holiday season. Good. And you're lucky to be a Delta. Thank you. We've got the best grub in the desert. Hey, why do you think we picked this outfit? <laughs> if there's anything you need, let Sergeant Stevens know. This here's your performance space. We have a generator fueled up if you need to plug in any equipment. Where do we sleep? You and Paula are in the women's barracks. Do we have to share a room? Yes, we do. And where do I sleep, Sergeant? We've set a cot up for you in one of the men's barracks. Are you all right? I got sick on the plane. Could I have a drink of water? Could we just get settled? Yeah. Why don't you sit down? Oh, brother. You jealous? I wouldn't waste my time. I would. Afternoon. How you doing? I'm Cynthia Clancy from ANN. This is Fred Evans. Hey, 
I was wondering... You're reading your eyes on the prize. Yeah, it was on public television last yeah, night. Yeah, I know. I almost worked on it. Really? What happened? Well, see, Fred. I... Sorry. I was just trying to tell Private... Uh, Johnson. Private Johnson. Yeah, Private Johnson, how I missed the boat. Would it be all right if I asked you some questions? <clears throat> sure. What's one of the most important things in your life right now? Well, school's up there. I'm a journalism student at the University of Virginia. No, I was a journalism major at Columbia. As an African-American man, Private, do you think this war has anything to do with you? Well, the brother section is pretty full, but not in this outfit. I just came here to do my duty like everybody else. You sign on the line, you got to do the time. I don't have any arguments with Arabs or Muslims. I can get shot at home. Are you afraid? People who declare Shahada have nothing to fear. Beg your pardon? It's a spiritual knowing that comes over you, and nothing troubles you anymore. There is nothing to fear. I have witnessed that there is no God but Allah, and Muhammad is his prophet. Out here in the desert, I've heard God calling. And that's the message you want sent home. Roll it, Fred. No, wait, 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 wait. Hold, hold up. My mom's a Baptist, so I think I'll save my Shahada <laughs> business for next Christmas. Speed. Hi, Mom. It's me, Martin. Don't cry, because as you can see, I'm doing fine. They're feeding me pretty good. I just wanted to tell you and Dad, Boo, Rosemary, Uncle Bebe, and Grandma Celine, Merry Christmas. You don't have to worry about nothing. I'm coming home soon. Just remember, I'm the child who's got his own. Cut. So anyway, I sent him my application for the book. I was in front of Hey, Corman! Christ, Phillips, I I'm off duty. Go find Carter in the medical tent if you got some other phantom illness you want treated. <laughs> I don't have a phantom illness. I'm not recommending medical leave for you, Private. I don't need you to. What is it now? You develop skin cancer? Huh. Eczema. Oh. I just wanted to thank you. Your beetle here just made me my spending money for my holiday leave. Who gave you leave? Oh, some of the guys are talking. There's going to be a bunch of us going home for Christmas. <laughs> I talked to Sarge. He said he'd put me at the top of the list. Christ! You just got here. You haven't done anything yet. I've been here for five months. Five friggin' months. My father was in Nam for 13 months before he got his first R&R. &R. <laughs> You're just jealous because I'm getting to go home. You don't get it, do you? This is our Vietnam. We got something, something that's ours. We don't have to listen anymore to that crap from our fathers about Vietnam or Korea because we got our war too. <laughs> well, I don't want it. Well, nobody's asking you what you want, goddammit. It's what our generation needs. It's our rite of passage. I just want a leave. There's nothing wrong with that. You know what? You need a war to show you what a man is. War doesn't make you a man. You don't think so? No. <laughs> I grew up staring at pictures of my father in his colonel's uniform. Oak clusters on his shoulders, crossed rifles on his lapels, and down his chest so many medals you couldn't even count. My father, he used to joke about fear. He used to tell stories about how he fought a VC hand to hand, humped out of the jungle with two wounded buddies on his back, and he still remembers the names of his men. Hell. I can see his war better than my own. And now, he wants me to write him and uh, tell him what it's like here. I tried. It's hard. And I couldn't think of a thing to write. So 
So, you're an Iraqi. What? How is it you came to this camp? Who are you? Cynthia Clancy, ANN. Can I have a few words? I don't think so. As an Iraqi, what is your role in a U.S. military installation? I have not consented to an interview. Would you prefer supposition? We could leave it simple and have the American public simply view you as a potential security threat. Look, don't jeopardize the lives of the enlisted here with your streak of yellow journalism. I am a naturalized, loyal American citizen, and I am here as a translator. That's it. What in the hell is going on out here? Nothing. Yeah. I don't believe what just happened. <laughs> Me neither. Since I've been here, I've gone up six levels in Super Mario's. I'm not talking about your stupid video game, Rick. Then don't talk to me. Who else can I talk to? You're the only other Iraqi here. Let's get one thing straight. You're the only Iraqi here. I'm American. You want to take me on? Did you see that ANN correspondent? Yeah, she's doing messages for the troops to send back home. So? So she just asked me what an Iraqi was doing in a U.S. military installation. You didn't tell her about me, did you? Oh, <laughs> so now you're worried. I thought I was the Iraqi and you were American. You know what I mean. I just don't want anyone to make an issue out of my dad being born in Iraq. Well, it shouldn't matter where I was born. I mean, it's bad enough listening to all the nasty remarks about Iraqis all the time. If she makes a big stink, I could lose my job. That is not going to happen. You're a naturalized American. If you are a security risk, the State Department wouldn't have given you clearance in the first place. I know that. But who's going to tell that to the viewers back home? Don't worry. Look, Suad. Hmm? The only thing you need to fear is a Super Mario champion of the world. <laughs> At ease, Lieutenant. Sir, would you please not do that, sir? And what is that, Lieutenant? Get me all hot and bothered when you know you're not going to do anything about it, sir. Is that a request for an air conditioner, Lieutenant? <laughs> What do you think? Jennifer, look. Oh, oh, let me guess. It's inappropriate, Jennifer, for a commanding officer to engage in a public display of affection in the middle of the barracks. I know, I know. I changed my mind. Okay, David. What's wrong? Huh? What is it? Are we going in? Jennifer, I love you. Isn't that a good enough reason? <laughs> so, someone might come in. They wouldn't dare. Captain Frawley to the infirmary. Captain Frawley. They better be dead. Dang. Why's it gotta be me pulling duty today, huh? They pulled my name too, so what? So what? The tide's on the gridiron. My boys are mixing it back up in Tuscaloosa. I'm sorry? 
The Crimson Tide? University, Alabama. Football. My boys are mixing up with Ole Miss today on the satellite. It's playing in the mess. I don't follow football. See, that's why it's okay they pulled your name. Right. Oh, hell, I should be out there mixing it up, too. I'd be out there suited up and kicking those Ole Miss bastards right on their asses. Is that right? You didn't see me with the pigskin in my hands. Then you'd see what a shame it is me being here. <laughs> the crime is what? You don't look big enough to play football. Big enough? Big enough? My brothers are all bigger than you. They didn't get pulled. Scat back. You know what that is? No. I come out of the backfield, see? And it's like that. Boom, scat! I'm out past the old Miss Lyman, see? And scat! Hoo, ha! <laughs> Your boy's got the pigskin cradled in the crook of his arm, one arm out stiff to crack any Mississippi defenseman. One comes up on me, and boom, scat! Through stiff arm that old Miss farm boy. And I'm out in the open field, streaking toward the Bama goal line. I slide to the right, smooth to the left, juking all the time. Oh, defense is coming up on me, clipping on my heels. Oh, they almost got me. Boom, scat! Your boy busts away. 45. 40, 35, 30, the stands are going wild, screaming my name, Cleveland, Cleveland. I'm going so fast, there ain't no way defense is going to touch me. I'm a ghost, a ghost. I'm stepping into the end zone, the crowd's going nuts. Cleveland, Cleveland, Cleveland. <laughs> Big enough hell. I guess you should be back home instead of here. Hey. Football's the same thing as going to war. Same thing. The guys of my family are all in law enforcement. <laughs> I can remember my father sitting down with my brothers, telling the three of them that before they join the police force, they should serve their country in time of war. <laughs> should have told them to play football. war, he said. They send you to the far corners of the earth. You hear the blasts of artillery and bombs. You get weapons, helicopters. You can call all heaven down and all hell up. That's what war can do. Uh -huh. <laughs> Every man, once in his life, should go to war. The funny thing is, out of all of them, I'm the only one who ever went. And? I can feel what my father was talking about. I feel different after being here, after seeing it. I know that if we wanted, we could call all heaven down. And knowing that you feel humbled, improved somehow, impressed by the power of war, by the beauty and the technology, like you're part of a force greater than yourself. <laughs> yeah. Like football. <laughs> yeah. Hey there. Hello, sir. Mark, right? Is everything all right? Can I do anything for you? No, no, I, I wanted to thank you, though, for being so helpful. It was an honor and a pleasure. If, uh... You'll excuse me. Sure. Hey, any news? Tired, hot, cranky, and full of sand. Yeah, you're the communications liaison. You must have heard something. Well, it seems as though my dad's hemorrhoids are acting up again. My mom had to go to the pharmacy at 11 at night to get him some tucks. Damn it, Sarah. You know what I'm talking about. All right. 
You're acting weird. David's acting weird. What's going on? <laughs> well, gee, General, we didn't come all the way over here because the designers at the Pentagon decided to switch from green to beige. So we're going in. If Saddam doesn't give us a reason, we'll make one up. You know something. And so does David. I know that if a human being were to stroll the Saudi sand naked right now with no provisions, they'd be dead within the hour. Go ahead, try it. Sarah. Jennifer. It's classified. So something is happening. If you don't shut up and stop nagging me right now, I'm gonna strangle you with your boot laces. I'm worried. So am I. Right now, I'd give my right arm to be able to go to the drugstore at 11 at night and get my dad some tucks. So, where'd you go to school, Goldbaum? University of Pennsylvania. You? LACC. But I didn't finish. My plans fell through, so I enlisted. What about you? ROTC? Mm. All the way. <laughs> I never thought I'd get caught in this shit, though. I mean, I played the game. Marched on Sundays, crawled in the muck on my belly. And what's the reward? What's the payoff? I get to be a demoted schmuck in Georgie's little oil war. You sound bitter. I am bitter. Uh... May we join you guys? <laughs> Linda. Rick. It's a small world after all. It's a small <clears throat> world after all. Let's take a hike. Where? Nepal. What are you doing here? I'm defending my country. What are you doing here? Just entertaining the troops. I always thought you'd make it. <laughs> if you call this making it. Well, Linda, give yourself a break. I had bigger plans. Me too. I'm sorry. I made some mistakes. I don't know what to say. It's good to see you. It's good to see you, too. Oh, my. It's beautiful. It's my special touch. At my house? We put lights everywhere at Christmas. Not just on the trees or the windows, but everywhere. They look like stars. Exactly. I am really impressed, Speedy. What you call me? Speedy. It's your nickname. I made it up after that cute little Mexican mouse on those Bugs Bunny cartoons. Well, I don't like it. Well, anyway. I can't pronounce your real name. You're going to have to work on it. But for now, you can just call me Santa. <laughs> well then, where's my light bright, my weeble wobbles, my Barbie townhouse, and my fair faucet poster? And I'll never forgive you for the time you just blew me off completely. If you'll be a good girl to Santa, it'll be easier for you to open up this present. Thank you. Now, 
What do you call me? A master cook. No. What do you call me? Santa. <laughs> what do you call me? Speedy. Hey, I only had one bite. What's my name? Oh, crap. How do I pronounce it? Um, tequila. <laughs> <laughs> Christmas. <laughs> Raphael. Gonzalez. <laughs> El Alberto. Gomez. Feliz Navidad. <laughs> what is it now, Phillips? I wrote a letter for you. What? That letter that you couldn't write to your father? Do you want to hear it? Why did you write my father? I don't know. You've been watching out for me. I just wanted to help you out. You don't have to send it. Well, I wrote my own. I got it right here. Well, I guess I'll go dream up some other phantom illness. Did I ever tell you my father was a doctor? He's got this big practice in New York City. <laughs> he wanted me to join him, but um, I didn't even make it into medical school. Figured I'd enlist, prove to him that I could be as heroic as he was. <laughs> Get some more stories of your own to swap with him, huh? <laughs> He'd love that. M maybe you need to tell those stories more than he needs to hear them. I mean, maybe they're your expectations. Maybe he's proud of you no matter what you do. You see this jacket? My father, he gave it to me. To keep me safe. Like armor. <laughs> he says it's like the ones the fighter pilots wore in World War II. They were the toughest. Scared the shit out of the Nazis. <laughs> That's why they wore them in Nam. To put the fear of God in those gooks. Because in Nam, you needed to have heroes on your back. Someone who'd been there and knew what you were going through. Someone you could respect and count on. Here, take it. Your dad wanted you to have it, I can't. No, I don't need it now. Not tonight. I feel law, like I could be a hero here. I don't need my father's armor on a night like this because nothing can touch me. Where are you going? I want to go see my war. <laughs> you just can't run off. Carl. You keep calling. Calling me, I've hit the bottom of the wretched sea, drowning in sorrow, no one to turn to. You keep calling, calling me. You are my tree in the shade You are my soft summer day You're lucky in love Only it's not me You and her together forever Tenderly me in my raggedy dress, my country shoes. This love, darling, 
love I only have for you. If you keep calling, calling me, I might grasp at bubbles in the sea. Your sweet voice calls to me. I'll hear my name coming from your heart. I'll leave all my troubles in the dark. If you keep calling, all in me. Come on, come on, let's get this show on the road. We have to wait for Carl. If he isn't here by now, I say he's disqualified. <laughs> you can't disqualify the defending champion. You can if he's not here. Hey, no bugs on the track before race time. That's unfair practice time. You're just pissed because you bet money on his bug. <laughs> hey, didn't you guys see Carl? He didn't show up for duty this morning. I don't believe this. Just hold all bets until I get back with Carl. Okay, let's try this one more time. Five, six, seven, and... Can we stop a minute? This is ridiculous. Have you been drinking again? There's no booze allowed in this country, remember? Rubbing alcohol, maybe? No. Vanilla, I'm turning you in. Please don't. This was the last time. You bet it was. You need me. We're only going to be here one more day. Is that my vanilla? I've been looking all over for that. Yes. I took it. Calming your nerves, huh? Well, I've got something better. Non-alcoholic, of course. It's an old recipe handed down from my grandpa. Excuse me. You work in that communications truck, right? Yes, but we're not I heard about that missing soldier. We're not allowed it's to divulge any It's not Rick Abari, is it? Because I haven't seen him all day and I didn't... It's not Rick, is it? No. <gasps> Thank God. How do you know Rick? <sighs> he was my boyfriend and we broke up last year and I've been thinking about him so much and... We ran into each other here yesterday. Weird, huh? Yeah. But maybe this is my second chance. Maybe. Thanks. Please get it together. Okay. Let's take five. If you keep eating the popcorn, we're not going to have enough to string up. I'm hungry. Have you guys seen Carl? Not in here. I haven't seen him. Sorry, man. Cut it out. Didn't you just finish lunch? I didn't eat much. I wasn't hungry. What's the matter? All of a sudden, you don't like my cooking. It's fine, honest. Then why didn't you eat it? You wouldn't be wolfing down all that popcorn if you had eaten lunch. I won't eat another goddamn piece of popcorn, okay? I'm sorry. Forget it. It's okay. No, it isn't. 
Usually I'm the one telling Frank and Jacqueline not to eat all the popcorn. This will be Jacqueline's third Christmas. Oh. She knows who <laughs> Santa is now. Frank promised he'd videotape the whole if thing. If you ask me, this woman in the military business is a crock. What kind of a man sits at home while his wife goes off to war? Don't talk Holy about Frank. Shit. He's every bit as much a man as you are. Now where I come from. You don't think women should serve? Hell no. Hey, don't start pulling that women's lib crap either. What are you doing? We're going to arm wrestle. <laughs> Who is? You and me. Hey, I don't wrestle women. No, go ahead, guys. This will be great. Hey, What's hey. the matter, Rafi? You scared? Please. You afraid to arm wrestle a little girl? Come on, everybody. Rafi and Andrea are going to arm wrestle. Mm -hmm. Great. Pack of Marlboros says the little lady wipes the floor with hey, Move over there and get in the picture, guys. Hey, don't bother. I'm not wrestling anybody. Cool. <laughs> Battle of the Sex is military style. Get her, Rafe. <laughs> What's the matter, Rafe? Hmm? You chicken? Bop, bop, bop! Come on, Andrea, show them what you got. <laughs> All right. <Yay! laughs> Don't go crying when I kick your butt. Don't worry, I won't. Ready? One, two, three, go! go. Come on, Andrea! Come on, Come on, Come on, Come on, You wear that and I break your nails. <laughs> hey, Andrea. How about sending a message home? I don't know. Why not? I get too emotional. They'll worry. Well, uh, I have news for you. They're already worried. How about you let them know how much you miss them? Sure, I look okay? Mm-hmm. Ready? Hi, Frank. Hi, Jacqueline. Daddy tells me you're wearing big girl underwear now. I'm so proud of you. Frank, be sure you give her three Oreos at bedtime if she's been good. Help her to unscrew them so she can eat the middle part first. But make sure you brush her teeth extra good. Jackie, Mommy misses you very much, and I can't wait to get home so I can give you extra hugs and kisses. I love you. Frank, I love you both very much. Take good care of each other. Merry Christmas. <sighs> if my bubby could see me now, celebrating Christmas, preparing for war, She'd turn over in her grave. Cone, is the mail in? Yeah. What the hell are you doing? Christmas spirit, Cohen. You call yourself a Jew? Sing a Hanukkah song for me, Terry? Was that what you said? Well, well, OK, Aaron, if it'll help you loosen up. Dreidel, dreidel, dreidel. I made it out me. of clay, and when it's dry and ready, a dreidel Shut up. will play, oh! You're singing this Hanukkah song, and you don't even know what it's about. It's about defending your country. It's about fighting for what you believe, right down to the last drop of oil to light your holy menorah. And by some miracle, that tiny drop is all you need to survive. Uh-huh. Biblical precedent for warring over oil. Georgie's people could use you. Don't you understand, Gold Bomb? It's not about oil. It's about principle. Mm-hmm. Blood for land. Kind of like uh, the West Bank. I've had about enough of your shit. And don't you believe in anything? Yeah. Yeah, I do, Aaron. I believe I don't want to die. I didn't come here to die. I came here to fight. I got people I love back home, you know. I have a fiance. But a man can't always do what he wants, what makes him happy. There's a thing called responsibility, Terry, when a man has to do something for a higher cause. You got a fiance, Cohen? Yes. 
Does that surprise you? <laughs> no. I just didn't know. That's nice. Damn right it's nice. And I wish I were with her right now. <sighs> Me too, Cohen. <laughs> I wish you were with her too. <laughs> you know where I'm supposed to be right now? Hmm. Nepal. Imagine that. Some mountains, cool breeze, nothing but blue skies. It's just me, my backpack. Not a worry in the world. You make me sick. You think if we all sit around, seeing give the world a coke, climbing mountains in Nepal, everything will be perfect. Well, I'll tell you where you're supposed to be, gold bomb. Not Nepal. Dead. Never been born. Extinct. Part of an extinct race. Right. I forgot. Hussein is the modern day Hitler. What are you gonna do, Aaron? Rub him out all by yourself? Is that Go to hell! Well, come on, guys. Knock it off. Where's your Christmas spirit? Dreidel, 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 I made it out of clay. And when it's dry and ready, a dreidel I will play. Hey! Hey there. Hello yourself. I'm taking requests. Christmas carols? I don't celebrate Christmas. Jewish? Atheist. Ah, so you're considered what? A theological non-combatant? Perhaps. How about you? Combatant. Or non-combatant. Whatever you're into. Do you realize where you are? Is this a trick question? You know, uh, they kill people like you here. The Saudis or the US military? Why'd you follow me out here? I don't know. I'm tired of talking to the same people all the time. And I find you very attractive. Keep your voice down. What? <clears throat> Is Big Brother listening? Yes. I better go. Mind if I join you? No. Pull up a chair. How about putting a little conversation with you on videotape? Thanks, but I'd rather not. Okay. Maybe later. So, Sarah, what do you think? Do we belong over here? Are you asking me as a reporter or as a person? Can I be both? I guess so. Well, contrary to what some people may have told you, I do believe that we should be here. I think that what we're doing is important. It's just... What? I wish we weren't doing it now, at Christmas. Homesick. I guess. A little. Aren't you? Nah. Now I'm used to being on the road. You married? Sure. But I take her wherever I go. <laughs> Last Christmas we were in uh, South Africa and the year before it was <laughs> Northern Ireland. <laughs> Does she uh, keep you warm at night? No. But uh, she's faithful. And uh, she does whatever I tell her. <laughs> <laughs> the perfect relationship. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what more could a man ask for? Well. <laughs> so what do you think? Let me and my wife here send a message home for you? Okay. Okay. Right. 
Rachel, if you'll just hear me out. It's like that sad movie you like to watch, where the guy dies and the kid never had a chance to tell him that he loved him. Remember that movie? You were embarrassed because you cried and your nose got all red and you thought you looked horrible. You kept touching your face. And I couldn't understand how you could cry at a movie. But if I saw that movie now, what I'm trying to say is, I'm sorry. I should have talked to you before signing up to come here. I should have talked to you. You know what I'm scared of, Rachel? Dying before I got to say that. Dying. With you still mad at me. Dying without telling you. It's like death to be without you. Marry me, Rachel. Will you marry me? That's it. Yeah, so then the next thing I'm talking to him, I say, forget that. Hey, you know, man. Come on. <laughs> Attention, all personnel. Quiet, everybody. This is Captain Frawley. It's come to my attention that many of you seem to think that because it's almost Christmas, you can relax. You cannot. We are still engaged in a military operation. To avoid casualties, all personnel are to remain within the base confines. Weapons are to be on your person at all times. Flak jackets are to be worn while undertaking assigned duty. This is not Palm Springs. This is Saudi Arabia. I wonder who pissed in his mess, kid. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Jesus. Lost a soldier, and we haven't even started fighting yet. Accidents happen. Not under my command. You had no control over it. Everything that happens here is my responsibility. How could he be so stupid? No flak jacket, wandering around at night. It was an accident. How am I going to tell his family? For Cleveland. You can call every show at the Met Tent. Yeah. He showed all right. <laughs> What's wrong? He showed in a body bag. Oh, my God. What happened? Nobody's saying. Captain Frawley, may I have a word with you? Not right now, Miss Clancy. Later. I hear there's a soldier missing. No comment. My sources at Log Base Bravo have told me we're shooting our own soldiers now. Miss Clancy, if there are casualties, the family has the right to be informed first. The American public has a right to know, too. The matter is under investigation. The government deceives the public, lies to the families. It's wrong, morally wrong. Miss Clancy, is this really about a missing soldier? Or is this about you scoring a story?
Dear Dad, you asked, so here's what it's like. I think this might be a good place to wage war, where our son could make his father proud, where he wouldn't be disappointed to die. Tonight, I can finally see my war better than yours, and you can be proud of me for that. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh. Hey! Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh. Ladies and gentlemen, happy holidays! The USO saw fit to provide you with some holiday cheer. And it doesn't matter what you celebrate. Christmas, Hanukkah, Jumada, the winter solstice, or just getting through the next 12 months. <laughs> the point is, we're all here, we're all together, making war, making love, <laughs> <laughs> making fun, making it all worthwhile. So, ladies, and a one. And a two, and a one, two, three, four. Carter, Michael, to the infirmary. The rest of you man your stations. Uh, Sergeant, you can hear the United States. Come on, fight! Are you okay? I think so. What's going on? We don't know yet. This is probably a weird time to ask this, but if we get out of this alive, could, could I have your number? Are you trying to pick me up in the middle of a possible bombing? Yeah. Your attention, please. We are not under attack. Repeat, we are not under attack. Please resume your evening activities. President Bush and removed his troops from Kuwait. Doctors and AIDS activists petitioned the federal government to put two new AIDS drugs on the market. Bail is denied to Mafia Kingpin John Gotti as he faces charges of racketeering. Governor Richard F. Celeste of Ohio granted clemency to 25 women who have been convicted of killing their husbands or lovers, claiming physical abuse. On the first anniversary of the U.S. invasion to rid Panama of General Noriega, thousands of Panamanians remain homeless. On a final note, at the age of 84, Carl G. Hinkle, creator of the MasterCard, is dead. Playing 
from a distance. I